Hello there, I'm Tabletop Toby. Today we're going to be doing a how to play and solo playthrough of Alice's Garden. This is a polyomino game designed by Yi Kwan Kwan. It has the art of Alice in Wonderland and your objective is to build patterns that please the Queen's demands, including that the garden be as full as possible, otherwise you get penalized. So, you know, maybe off with your head? So let's dive in and see how this all works, and then we'll jump into a solo playthrough. How to play Alice's Garden is fairly straightforward. So first off, you choose the first player. In this case, I've just set up for a two-player game. The official rule is that it's whoever last watered a plant, but of course you can use whatever you would like, and they get the first player token, which is the Mad Hatter's hat. So that player, um, for the first round only, chooses one of the five polyomino bags, that's the four piece tiles, not one of the solo pieces. Those are earned differently and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So say they want this one, they will take tiles out equal to the number of players plus one. So in this case, there's two, so it'd be three. If it were a three player game, it'd be four, etc. So now that player gets to choose one of these and they're the same on both sides, but you can flip them over and turn them however you want and place them on your board. So let's say in this case, the player puts that there and then play passes to the next player clockwise. And in this case, just the other player and that player would take one of these two and place it on their board. And then that would be the end of the round. Once all players have taken one of the tiles that were available from the first player's draw, then the round ends. And that always leaves one extra tile. And the first player token then passes to the next player clockwise. And now this player gets to choose one of the five polyomino bags and they now only choose for the number of players. So say they want this one, they now only pull two to match the number of players. So there's still one extra in the market, but now that player can choose any of them. They can choose the one that was already there, or they can choose one of these. So say they choose this one in this case, put that there, play passes clockwise to the next. Now this player can choose either one of those, Say they want to go for the one that was there before. Because look, there's another chess piece, which we'll talk about in a minute. They place that there, and then that's the end of the round, and the first player marker would pass to the next player clockwise. So play continues until one of the players can no longer place one of the polyomino pieces on the board when it's their turn to take one. At that point, scoring occurs generally. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail. But first, we're going to talk about these square tiles because that plays into the end game. So the way that these square solo pieces are earned is that two of the queen's gardeners, not guards, for each adjacent one to the one that you just placed, you earn one of these. So say I just did this move, then that's one square tile. Now that square tile is just put to the side. It is not played immediately, and this is part of the overall strategy of the game. Now, if there are more adjacent tiles, like say in this case, this was like this, and I place this here, so the one I place is adjacent to two, that would actually earn two draws of these solo tiles. They stay on the side until the in-game condition is triggered when someone cannot place a polyomino piece, and only at that point can you place these tiles. So let's talk about how that plays into scoring. All right, so let's say this is the in-game condition. Um, it's this player's turn. They just drew these squares. They can't place one of these. So the game immediately ends, and now everyone places their bonus tiles here, these solo pieces. So let's say this player puts that one there, that one there, and that one there. Now, 
this blank square that they were unable to fill because they have no solo pieces left, that is now negative five points. So let's look at their friend over here. In this case, they have these five leftovers, but they only have four spots. So once they place these, then they actually get penalized negative five for the one they didn't use. So it's both negative for an open square and it's negative for not using one of these. So managing your extra tiles and how many you earn and how you place your pieces is part of that overall strategy. All right, so that's negative scoring conditions. Let's talk about positive scoring conditions because, you know, let's be positive. So the scoring conditions are all here at the bottom of each player board, which is very nice. And for mushrooms, it's fairly easy. Any column that you have two mushrooms in, so for example, this one has one, two, we get eight points. And so you just go across, how many do you have multiplied by eight? This only has one mushroom in it, so no scoring for that one. And you just add them up. Now for the chess pieces, it's when any chess piece is in that center chess board section. Each of those is worth five points. The trees are a little bit more complicated. For trees, they're in rows instead of columns. You don't do flat scoring. You look at each row and you look at only neighboring trees and the longest distance between two neighboring trees in that row and you count from one tree to the next, including those trees. So for this row, there's one, two, three, but then there's one, two, three, four, five between these, so it would be five. And you just work your way through each row and count across each one. So that one's a little bit more complicated on the scoring. Roses are also a little bit more complicated than the mushrooms and the chess pieces, but fairly straightforward. For an individual rose piece, it's only worth one. If there's two connected, like here, that's worth four. If there's three, nine, so lumping them together um, is better. However, you don't get any benefit for any run that's over five. So you wanna make sure there's breaks in between that five set you have and any other roses. Otherwise, any additional roses will not score you anything. So you add up all those scoring conditions, you take the negatives from the open spaces and the leftover tiles, and that's your score. You compare, highest number wins. Now these boards do have an alternate side that's a little bit more complex. It has the chessboard pieces spread out a little bit. So that adds some variability, um, and it also makes it more difficult to remember where those are at the end. So when you do play with this board, uh, whereas with the other one, you know that it's the center ones, you really have to kind of peek and remind yourself at the end of the game where those are at. Not too complicated. I actually think I prefer this one uh, just in terms of how the game plays out. All right, that's how you play Alice's Garden. The gameplay loop is fairly straightforward uh, with the picking the tiles, passing the player token, and just repeating. The real heart of the game is managing how you achieve these scoring objectives, and then also how you manage your gardeners in earning these extra tiles, making sure you earn enough to fill in all your blank spots, but not too many so you don't get penalized for having extras left over. As the instruction manual says, the queen is very demanding and she wants all of the garden filled, but she does not stand for indulgence. So no extra pieces, those are gonna be penalized as well. So that's, uh, that's how you do it. All right, and then before we begin our solo playthrough, we should probably learn how to play the solo game. Uh, it's fairly easy. Um, it tries to mimic the experience of not always having your favorite option of the next piece to pull. And the way it does that is you put all five of the main polyomino bags on the left hand side and you start out there. The bonus tiles are earned the same as they are in the solo game um, by putting gardeners next to each other, adjacent to each other. And so what happens is on your first turn, you choose one of these, let's say the square. We get to pull out two options. 
those go there and then the bag goes to the right hand side and now that's kind of off limits so i place one of these anywhere i would like and then this tile goes away so it just goes kind of in a discard pile and then on my next round i only get to choose the four that are left over so i would then choose the two options there i place one of those this bag goes onto the right it's off limits this goes in the discard pile you continue until all five have moved over and then you move them back over and it kind of starts a new round so the uh, individual squares, as I mentioned, um, happen the same way, and you add those at the end when you can no longer place one of your polyamino pieces, and then all of the scoring is exactly the same. So very easy breezy. The solo mode is basically uh, be your own score. There are guidelines in the instructions regarding how much you have pleased or displeased the queen. Under 70 points, uh, you do not appease the queen. 70 to 89, I really like the language here. This place does look like a garden, but the queen is hardly satisfied. You can do better. And then it goes up all the way to 130 or more. Perfect, the queen appoints you the chief royal gardener. And really, who doesn't want that? All right, so let's dive into our solo playthrough. Now, one thing to keep in mind now that I've explained how the solo mode works is that you're cycling through these five polyomino shapes and moving them to the right. So you have to do one of each and then your next cycle is one of each. So you kind of have more information in some ways than you would with a multiplayer where you wouldn't know necessarily what was coming or how that next round is gonna look. But in this case, you may know that one of these is not going to come around again by the end of the game. So that's something to keep in mind and something that plays into your strategy of what you're going to choose. So let's start out with the square. So we pick our two options. And then this bag goes off to the right. It's off limits until we hit the next round. And so what do we have here? We could put two mushrooms in a row right away and get the chest piece there. We could have two trees kind of on one side to try to maximize our tree scoring. Let's go ahead and do that. The, tr the trees can really add up if you have multiple rows of them. So this one goes away to discard and then we choose our next option. Let's go ahead and see what this one turns up for us. Some roses, some trees. Now with this one, we could go ahead and maximize our scoring for that tree. Um, we could also do something like that and maximize that tree and leave that open for us to do. Start a clump of roses. I think that's what we'll do for this round. Pick our next one. Do one, two. And you see it's fairly straightforward. You can definitely spend more time thinking about the best options and what's gonna turn up. But the basic premise and scoring options are fairly clear. So I could put that there to get a clump of roses, but it blocks off that option as a tree. Now this one is interesting because it's two roses, which gives us a clump of four, which is 16 points, and then already puts two mushrooms in that column. So I think we're gonna do that. So we only have these two options left. I think at this point, it doesn't make a huge difference. Let's go ahead and start with this one because then that may inform where we put that one depending on what we draw. So this one, let's see here, it could get two pieces on the chessboard. I could do something like that or something like that. Something like that. 
but that's kind of a waste of this one. We don't want to do that because it leaves three there, which nothing will fill. Hmm. Let's see what this option looks like. Um, can't quite put the tree there. We could do something like that, which will give us the clump of five roses and it puts a piece there. We could put an L maybe there. So that does for us some options going forward. So let's go ahead and try that. Getting that 25 points for that rose grouping of five is pretty awesome. So we only have one choice for this one. This bag goes off to the right. That's the, gonna be the end of this round for us. So this is nice because it puts two mushrooms in a column right away, but could do something like that, but that makes that not a usable spot except for by the solo pieces. We could do now this I kind of like because it puts two mushrooms in this column and it gets us our first bonus piece. I think we're going to try that so that way we're kind of lumped here together and we don't block ourselves in over here. So we do get one of these bonus tiles for the two adjacent gardeners there and that just gets put to the side. So we have a mushroom there. So we have a solo mushroom there. So that's always an option to consider. And then all of these bags that were over here in discard come back. I think in this case I'm going to choose an L because an L could potentially go there or there. So let's see what that turns up. The bag goes off to the right. So here we can start another clumping of roses and we would get two mushrooms together. Now this is interesting because we don't have any mushrooms in that column. So we would automatically get eight points for doing that and maybe start another mushroom one. I kind of like that idea. And it's better not to, it's better to kind of build in clumps because if you put something kind of out in the middle that's blocking things, it makes it hard to work around depending on what you get. Now this one, you could also get two mushrooms there. But I don't think, neither of these is necessarily good for this unless I just treat this as beginning mushroom options for up there. But I think I'm gonna do this one so we get mushrooms in this column for those eight points. We could do this piece to kind of fill in that, or this might be an option over there as well. I think let's go ahead and do this one. Okay. So for this one, you could do something like that, which would allow one of those pieces to potentially go there. It gets a chest piece there. It gets a second mushroom there. It gets a tree there, although it won't score unless we get another tree. Um, could do something like that, but it's kind of a waste of the chest piece. Let's see what this other piece looks like. That doesn't necessarily do much for us. It doesn't put roses near anything. I think we'll go ahead and do that. At least gets us the second mushroom for that column and the chest piece and the option of a tree going there. This goes away. And then we just have these three to choose from if we can keep uh, everything on the board. <laughs> and so let's go ahead and do this one and see if we can maybe fill in that space. This goes off to the right. So we could put two more mushrooms in a column. So now that's gonna be a waste of that mushroom. Let's see if this does anything. It would get that second tree there and get a tree started for this row potentially. It cuts off those roses though. But I don't know. 
guess this does put a chess piece there, but then this mushroom is wasted. It will give us a bonus tile there though. So let me just think about this. Those are completely wasted. We get the bonus tile in five points. This we're gonna get five points for the tree. Nothing else, it's kind of the, I think this gets us the five points for the chess piece and then a bonus tile. So I think that's our best option there. We'll do that. This goes away and then we do get a bonus tile, in this case a rose. So we might want to start another rose grouping if we can. <laughs> we'll see what we draw. Let's draw the square next. See where it becomes uh, constraining pretty quickly in the solo game because you have to take those pieces in sequence. So there's definitely a puzzle to it that you have to figure out that is a little deeper than it seems initially, I think. Now this one, we could get two mushrooms in this left column and we could start another rose grouping. This one, we could start another rose grouping I don't know that that tree does anything for us. Now we could do like that and we get a bonus tile and we could potentially put a tree there. But this is guaranteed eight points for getting mushrooms in that column. And then we have lots of columns of mushrooms which is gonna be very beneficial. So I think we're gonna do that because it also starts these roses to work with our bonus tile which I just realized I put off screen. Apologize for that, there's those two that we drew. And then let's see what we draw for this last one. Now this is gonna to be tough. If we do something like that, we pretty much are gonna cause the end of the game because no other pieces can be played. But if we did something like that, we could choose either a line or one of those shapes to go there. So that's gonna be our best option. So let's see if we do that, what that looks like. So that would give it us five points there and then an extra tile. But we could, if we put this here, do that extra rose piece there. And then that would give us um, 16 points at least. So that's one option. If we did something like this, we get the five points, another mushroom. We do have the bonus mushroom there. Maybe we also get the extra tile. So that would be five. We can't get the eight because we can place the extra mushroom there and the extra tile. Whereas this is probably gonna be more because we'd be going from nine to 16, which is seven points for the rows, which we'll be able to connect, plus the five points for the chess piece, plus getting the bonus tile. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna draw the bonus tile, which is a tree. And then all of these come back over and pretty much only get one final option. So if we did this shape, we could potentially cut off our roses. So I think we're going to do a line as our last piece. One, two, and it looks like we will be able to do a five rows one potentially. If we did that, we would get two points for the trees. We would be able to fill in that gap with the other roses, which would get us from 16 to, that we were gonna have to 25. Or this one, the tree is wasted, the gardener is wasted. So I don't think that's our best option. I think it is this one. And then we know we're not gonna be able to place any other pieces, so that does trigger the end of the game for us. So we place our bonus tiles, so obviously we'll place the rows there. The tree will nicely go 
all the way across. And then we have this mushroom, which I think is going to be wasted because there's nothing in those columns. But it doesn't make sense to put it there because we already had that. And so that's our completed board. So we will get negative five for not filling in that spot. For the mushrooms, we have one, two, three, four, five columns. So that's 40 points for the mushrooms. For chess pieces, we have one, two, three, four. So that's four times five, that's 20. For trees, we have, we don't have two trees there. That's only two points, so that's two. And then we have these, which are all the way at the ends, which is awesome. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But on this bottom row, we only get five because that's the longest run, plus these two. So that's eight. Last but not least, roses, we're gonna do really well here. We have a grouping of five there, that's 25. Another grouping of five, so that's 50. And then we have the grouping of two, which is four. So that is 54 on the roses. That was definitely our high scoring um, item this time. All right. And with all of that, we get 124, which the instruction manual tells us is great. The queen is delighted and the gardeners sing your praises. You know, we did pretty darn good, I think the queen's gonna keep us on as staff for just a little bit longer at least, but we'll see how next season goes. So that was my how to play and solo playthrough of Alice's Garden. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. And even if you didn't, the queen says that you have to, otherwise there may be penalties. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Thank you for your time. And uh, just remember, the only rule is that there are no rules except in board games.